You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host, and I'm lucky enough to be joined by the Reverend Dr. Robert Ross from the Unitar Universalist Unitarian Church. That's right. Nice, nice to, to be see here. You. Um, that's the church that uh, close to nine years ago that I had an interfaith ceremony in and I got married in. Excellent. I love your church and all the people associated with it. You guys do fabulous work. I grew up around the corner from the church on Ash Street. It's a very good community now. It's an elder church congregation, but for the size and for the age of it, it's very actively involved in the community and social justice uh, causes. It sure is, and I used to live across the street in the Douglas estate in a couple oh. of the different apartments, and <clears throat> used to visit someone there on a regular basis. I've been to the, you guys have done Passover seders there, yeah. and I always got invited over there for that, and uh, it's a nice place, and it's a beautiful church, so congratulations on all of that. Now, you guys are doing a, a great event coming up very soon, I believe it is on Sunday on Father's Day. Right. If I'm not mistaken, on June 16th. 16th. Okay. And tell us about it. Tell us about what, you, what you're doing. The, the, let's do the time we know the place. Okay. So tell us. Well, it's a festival celebrating Juneteenth, which actually is on the 19th, but this Sunday is the closest Sunday to it. Uh, the time is from 10 to 2. Uh, at 10, there will be a shorter worship service in the chapel downstairs in the church and then we'll migrate quickly to the lawn outside and Frida's uh, Visual Center for Black Experience in America will be open as well. Uh, there will be refreshments, there will be some live Zydeco music mm. that I will play since I had a Cajun Zydeco band at one point. Wow. Uh, we'll have some games for kids, there will be food. Uh, the opportunity to visit Frida's uh, Visual Center um, and to come to an understanding of what Juneteenth represents, uh, especially for the African-American community, but really for uh, all peoples who are part of Brockton's diverse community. So I'm hoping I can get from one event to the other event. There's a Father's yeah. Day Walk for Peace that's right. downtown that's um, <clears throat> happening. I interviewed Sharon Baker, who's organizing that. Right. And it's hard to be in two places at once, but I'm going to have to get over there. What time's the Zydeco music going to happen? It'll be on and off okay. um, because I'll be talking to people, but I'll be playing, you know, um, uh, from time to time too. So it'll be continuous throughout the time. See, I was lucky. I had a best Laissez friend. Laissez le bon temps rouler. <laughs> I had a best friend of mine who went to the University of New Orleans. She was a drama teacher. Yeah. And when she had her daughter's bat mitzvah, it had a Zydeco theme and a Zydeco band and all the Cajun food that's so nice. Yeah. And it was at the Taunton Holiday Inn back in the day. So <laughs> I, I, my, my life's ambition is to go down to New Orleans. I've never been. I had one year it was supposed to be a conference and it didn't happen. But let's talk a little bit about Juneteenth. Sure. Uh, the Brockton Library over the years has done stuff to commemorate that, but there isn't anything over there this mm -hmm. year. So this is the Juneteenth event in the city. Right. Give us a little history of it. Well, it's the oldest celebration that commemorates the ending of uh, slavery uh, in the United States. And what it commemorates is that on June 19th in 1865, there were Union soldiers. They were led by uh, Major General Gordon Granger. They landed in Galveston, Texas with the news that the war had indeed ending. Uh, ended and that enslaved people were now free. Now, this is two and a half years after Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation, which officially took place on January 1st in 1863. Um, but it didn't have that Emancipation Proclamation didn't have a great impact on Texans because there was a minimal number of Union soldiers there uh, to really enforce the executive order. Uh, but after Lee's surrender in April of 1865, uh, then the troops came down and they had uh, forces strong enough to overcome resistance. And there was certainly resistance from the local landowners or plantation owners in really announcing this because they depended upon the enslaved population mm -hmm. for their harvest. So that the delay can be accounted for by that and several other reasons, but that's really 
what it celebrates and the order that uh, Granger read to the people of Texas, Executive General Order Number 3, the people of Texas are informed that in accordance with the proclamation from the executive of the United States, all slaves are free. This involves an absolute equality of rights and rights of property between former masters and slaves, and the connection heretofore existing be between them becomes that between employer and free laborer. Mm -hmm. And the reaction of the African-American population was really very varied. Um, some people immediately took off four points north following the, um, uh, the drinking gourd the, and the, uh, the old uh, underground railroad routes that existed uh, mostly through Alabama. Um, some hung on to work but get paid for their work on plantations. There was a reticence of the plantation owners to really, they depended upon this population for work and so it, it was really an economic upheaval. But the, the reaction of the African Americans, some were so overwhelmed by the freedom that they, some even committed suicide. That wow. It was just that much of a change in their whole environment. So that's the immediate background to. Okay. And if we had a half an hour, we'd go through the whole thing. Well, but as an ex-professor, you, you, you wind it. me up. Well, <laughs> I didn't know the Zydeco band part. That's very interesting, too. <laughs> yeah. so, so here's what we're going to do. We're just going to remind everybody it is on June 16th, which is Sunday. It's 10 to 2. Mm -hmm. You and I both know where the Unitarian Church is. It's at the corner of Belmont Ave. And 325 and, West Elm. Exactly. And it's... The triangle. It, yes, it, so it looks it. like it's a vehicle about to take off for outer space, but it's a very radical A-frame building with a window, a lot of windows in the front. It it's, sure is, and it's a beautiful building, and I know there's been a lot of work done to yeah. uh, enhance the building, make it look good. The, the museum is phenomenal, yeah. and you have other church groups that meet there, too. Yes, we have two Haitian uh, churches that uh, share the uh, facility with us, and... and uh, and nice. other congregations are, are, are welcome too. We, the Unitarian Universalist tradition is one that really tries to operate as a focal point for diverse, diverse faith traditions coming together and exploring their traditions with one another, raising questions, coming to understand them through person, face-to-face -face contact. Well, you do good work, and we we'll hope to have you back. You do coffee houses and all yep. sorts of things over there. Yeah. So thank you for joining us. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you for having me. You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more events, places, people, and faces right here in the City of Champions.